I'm making three miniature accessories entirely from scratch with cheap or free materials. I'm using some matchsticks to make the frame of the washboard, but you can substitute other materials. Some of the matchsticks are crooked or thinner than one another, so I chose a few pieces that are the same size. I cut two pieces the same length as one another to use as the long sides of the washboard. I cut two middle pieces that attach the sides. These are the four pieces that make up the frame of the washboard. I used watered down brown paint to stain the pieces and cut one of the cross pieces in half. Now the frame of the washboard is made up of five pieces in total, two long side pieces and three middle pieces. Before I start assembling, I'm making sure the three middle pieces are the same length as one another. I sanded a little off of this piece to make it shorter. I looked through my stash of printouts and chose this graphic to add to a piece of popsicle stick across the top of the washboard. This will add more detail and make it look like it's the brand name of the manufacturer. Since the print is so small, nobody will ever realize it's actually an advertisement for burpee seeds. To make it look older, I'm adding some watered down brown paint around the edges. If you'd like to add a wash over the print, you should seal the paper first so the ink doesn't bleed. I'm framing the brand name with the two thin pieces of matchstick I cut in half. Before attaching the two side pieces, I marked both of them to ensure the middle piece is attached at the same height. Before I decide on the placement and glue in the bottom piece, I'm making the corrugated metal piece that goes in the center of the washboard. This entire project was inspired by the small-scale corrugation inside of this thin box. I'm starting with a coat of Mod Podge mixed with black paint. I'm doing the same painting technique on the front and back so the washboard will be finished on both sides. I'm stippling the silver paint over the surface, making sure I don't entirely cover all of the black. Preserving some of the black gives the metal more depth and character. And to add the look of tarnish, I'm using a torn sponge brush to apply some brown paint. The brown areas look like the metal is in the early stages of forming rust. I'm adding some rust to the edges, so I'm tracing the frame so I know where to apply it. I'm using Dirty Down Rust from Goblin's Hut. I'm only adding a little rust because I want this to look like an antique, but not something that's abandoned. To make sure I get a tight fit, I started by cutting a straight line with my scissors and lined the frame up with the cut edge. Now that the edges are cut, I'm adding a little bit of darkness using some black paint. I think the little shadow adds some depth and makes the miniature look more realistic. I cut the faux metal to length and added some shadow to the bottom as well as around the inside of the frame.
I cleaned up the extra glue with a paintbrush. I'm using the round end of a popsicle stick to make the scrub brush. I traced the size and shape of the popsicle stick and now I'm making a small oval template to add the bristles to. I prefer adding the bristles to a template rather than directly to the wooden brush because I think it looks tidier and more realistic. The cereal box piece will be covered in bristles. To make it harder to see the cereal box template, I'm peeling off a couple layers to make it thinner. I'm sketching a small border around it which will be the size of the wooden brush. I'm using this faux dead grass I got at my local dollhouse store to make the bristles. I listed some alternative materials in the description. To make it easier to apply the bristles, I'm gluing the template to a shiny colored pencil. I cut a straight line across the faux dead grass I'm using. I'm applying the glue to the cut end. I'm carefully applying the bristles a small chunk at a time, making sure they're sticking straight out. The white glue grabs a hold of the cereal box material a lot more quickly than it does if you're applying the bristles directly to a piece of wood. If you'd like to take a large clump of bristles and cover the entire template at once, you can give it a shot. I prefer applying small clumps because it gives me more control over where the bristles end up. Once I have most of the template covered, I come back in with smaller clumps to make sure the entire perimeter is covered so it's a nice neat oval. The glue needs to completely dry before it can be handled. While the bristles are drying, I'm using my X-Acto to cut out the small brush. I want the brush to be more narrow than a full popsicle stick, so I'm starting by cutting a sliver on each side. To keep things simple, I used straight cuts to cut the oval. I cut at an angle on each side of the oval and then straight across the bottom. I sanded away the straight cuts and rounded all the edges. I'm staining the handle of the brush with some watered down brown paint. I'm using a little watered down black paint to add some age where I'll later be adding a faux leather handle. I finished the paint job with a dry brushing of beige. I'm using some brown paper bag to make the faux leather. To add texture, I'm crinkling it up into a tight ball before flattening it. I sealed both sides with Mod Podge. I'm finishing by scrubbing on a small amount of brown paint on both sides. The Mod Podge coating not only strengthens the paper, but it helps resist some of the brown paint so it gets caught in the texture I created. I'm attaching the handle so there's a small gap between the paper and the wood. I want it to look like a tiny 112 scale hand could fit in there. I recently bought these nail studs after watching Little Gretchen's Bags, Boxes, and Luggage series. I'm adding one on either side using some white glue to make it look like this is what's holding the leather straps onto the brush. The brass looks a bit too shiny, so I'm using some rust effects to tone it down. I let the bristles dry for a couple hours, so now it's time for a trim. I'm using a small pair of sharp scissors and making tiny snips so the bristles don't get pulled out. When I applied my bristles, I squeezed the bunches pretty tightly so they're nicely packed. If you apply looser bundles, you'll have less bristles. I removed the template from the pencil so I can trim around the edges to tidy it up some more. 
I'll be starting a new project soon which will be a miniature boutique or ladies bedroom. I think I'll use the same technique to make a fancy silver hairbrush. I'm using white glue to apply the template. Make sure you center the bristles the way you like before you press them down all the way. To make a simple metal tub, I started with a plastic food container. You can paint trash plastic, but this container is compostable, so I don't feel confident painting it since it's designed to break down over time. Instead, I'm cutting off the rim so I can use it to make a pattern. I did my best rolling the plastic cup against the piece of paper while I traced the shape of the curve. Then I folded the piece of paper in half and continued the curve on the outside before cutting it out. I'm tracing my paper template onto some cardstock which is a much thicker paper. I added glue to one end and I'm placing it inside of the cup to keep it the right size. First I did a test fit and now I'm adding a bead of glue around the bottom. For a little more security, I added another bead of glue around the inside. I'm using some stretchy string I got from clothing tags to add a rim around the top. I'm using white glue and attaching the string on top of the cut edge of the cardstock. Next time I'll try adding it on the outer edge for more dimension because the string is about the same thickness as the cardstock and it kind of blends in. I like the look a lot better around the bottom because it sticks out instead of being in line with the sides. I'm making a couple really simple handles using some jump rings and computer paper. I cut a strip longer than I need to make sure both pieces will be the same width as one another. You can cut straight across to get rid of the excess paper, but I like cutting an angle on both sides and then straight across the top for more detail. When you install your handles, make sure they're straight across from one another. I used a mixture of black paint and matte Mod Podge to seal the entire thing and help keep the pieces I added from coming off. I finished the tub by using the same painting techniques I did on the washboard. If you need to make more cleaning supplies, here's a tutorial for a bristle broom. 